Hello, David Starr here for another Mastering the Marketplace video. Now, when creating your SaaS offers in Partner Center, there are information sections you must fill out in order to complete the offer information. This video will explore the sections that are specific to SaaS offers. For information on filling out that content, which is common to each offer type, you can find that video in the Partner Center course on our website. Let's take a look at what we'll cover in this module. In this video, we'll cover the sections in Partner Center that are unique for SaaS offers. The sections we'll be covering are all here on the screen. Rather than enumerate them right now, know that for each section listed here, we'll have a demo on how to use it. So let's get started with the demos. Offer setup is all about basic information for your solution. Here, we'll set up several things to configure your solution's integration to Marketplace. Let's move from the Offer Overview page over to Offer Setup. Now, in Offer Setup, one thing I'll point out is that right here at the top, you can always find your offer's ID and the offer type. Now, you may be asked by support services for your offer ID, and this is where you can get it. For alias, this is the name of the product that you put in at the very beginning, the name of your offer. And with regard to the name of your offer and how it shows up in Partner Center, the alias is the name that shows up in Partner Center regardless of the title that you've put onto your product. Now, under setup details, the pertinent question here is whether or not you would like Microsoft to sell this solution on your behalf or whether you would not. Now, if you select yes, this means that you are creating a transactable offer in the marketplace. Were you to select no, however, that means that this offer would not be transactable. That is, Microsoft would not bill on your behalf, nor would you as a publisher receive any of the go-to-market benefits available to those publishing transactable offers. So for our example here, of course, we're going to select yes. In this next section about license management services, note that within the AppSource marketplace, not within the Azure marketplace, but within AppSource in that storefront, you are able to take advantage of a Microsoft licensing service that licenses your software on a per user basis. And this is simply a selection saying, if I'm going to use AppSource, would I also like to use the Microsoft licensing service? So I'm gonna say no to that and move on to test drive. So test drive is an opportunity to allow your customers to try before you buy your application. Now your application, your SaaS solution, would need to actually support the notion of test drives and the architectures or solution architectures for doing so are beyond the scope of this video, but just keep in mind that if you do wanna support test drives, this is where you enable that. Next is customer leads. Customer leads is an opportunity for you to connect your lead management system to the marketplace so that you can find out who's been looking at, who's been trying your solutions. So to do this, we select connect and we tell the marketplace where you would like to send your leads. And so some very simple options are to send it to an Azure table that is in Azure, you can go in and create a data storage account. Within there, you'll find the Azure table service and you can store your leads there. Alternatively, you can expose an endpoint to the internet that will just accept incoming messages and you can do with your leads whatever you like at that point. If you're using Dynamics 365, for customer engagement, you can send your leads directly there. Same is true for Marketo and Salesforce. If you're going to select Salesforce, you just put in your organization ID here and you'll be able to validate the connection and then you'll be receiving leads inside Salesforce. Now, actually, 
using this capability of CRM integration is optional. So I'm going to turn it off in my offer. I'm not going to actually integrate with a CRM tr or lead tracking system. Next is the Microsoft 365 integration. This is really for Teams apps and Office add-ins, SharePoint add-ins, things like this. And with regard to our offer that we're creating for the Azure Marketplace, M365 integration really is not something that we're going to be doing. We're not going to be integrating with Microsoft Graph, for example, as a component of our product. Now, if you are interested in publishing Teams applications, this is where you're going to indicate that, Office add-ins or SharePoint, framework solutions, etc. So you can say, I have published a Teams app, if you have done this, into App Source, and when you do, you can select this option to add a link to your app source offer. So if in app source, you've published a Teams application that you want to be supported by your SaaS application, then this is where you tie those two things together. I'm going to select no in this case. I'm going to delete that and select no, that I have not published a Teams application and save draft. Note that it's green up here and I've successfully saved. Next, we're gonna have a look at the offers properties which detail several things about our application that are going to configure it for the marketplace. Let's have a look at our properties tab over here. Now, the first thing to note is categories. So this section of categories here requires us to complete at least one category or select at least one category. Now to do that, we click on this button of categories and note that we have a big dropdown of the categories that we might want to choose. Now before choosing, it's very important for you to note that over here, there is a link to learn more about what I'm going to say next. And that is that the category you select determines whether or not your offer will end up on Marketplace, Azure Marketplace, or on AppSource. It could be on both, or it could be just on Azure Marketplace, or it could be just on AppSource. Now, in order to select this, it turns out that at that documentation page I was just pointing to, you can learn which of these categories are going to target App Source and which will target Azure Marketplace. In our case, I'm going to select Developer Tools, Developer Service, and this is going to target Azure Marketplace. Now, were I to add another category, this one would be, let's say, business focused, like compliance and legal. In this case, this category will cause me to list my application or solution on AppSource, which is not something I'm interested in doing for our demo here, but wanted you to know that that's what the categories will do for you. Next, we get down to this industries section in which we can say, yes, I want my offer to show up on AppSource, and I'm going to select which industries within AppSource I would like to target because AppSource has a browse by industry feature. That's what this is. Again, we're not using AppSource in our offer today, so I'll simply turn that off. Next, we get down to Microsoft Clouds for Industry. Again, this is a categorization that you can choose here that will cause your solution to show up on app source in a browsable way for those who are interested in industry cloud specific solutions and if we don't want this by the way we have to uncheck this microsoft clouds for industry checkbox and next we'll look at the app version now this is an optional field you don't have to put in anything here but if you would like, you can include an application version, and this will simply be displayed on the offer page within Marketplace for your solution. It's just a display string and doesn't tie you to a specific version of your software. Next, we look at the legal section. This is the last one on this page. And the first thing to note is that if I want 
to apply terms and conditions to my customers, one option is to simply use Microsoft's standard contract language. And you can learn more about that here. This can just save you a lot of time because it's going to use the terms and conditions that Microsoft is using with all customers today. Next though, you can provide an amendment. So you can state that you would like to amend the current policy and this will provide an override for whatever policy you would like to amend. Further, you can add amendment terms that you want to target to specific customers. So for example, you could put in an amendment here and then include the tenant ID of the customer you would like to accept this custom amendment to the basic terms and conditions. Let's go ahead and get rid of this and I'll deselect use the standard contract and we will provide terms and conditions text here if we like or we can provide a link to the terms and conditions that should appear on your website. So this will be a publicly facing site that we can just simply link to. Those are our options for providing terms and conditions to our customers. I'm simply going to select the standard contract for Microsoft's commercial marketplace and hit save draft with no amendments in place. And I've successfully saved the page. Now we're gonna have a look at the preview audience tab, which is where we go to set up our testing accounts. Let's see what I mean. We'll head over to the preview audience menu item. And here we're able to specify email addresses that we would like to have access to our test environment. That is, if you recall under offer overview, when our solution reaches the preview stage, we can actually go in and test it. So these are going to be the email addresses of those who can actually go in and test our solution at that point. These must be Azure accounts such that each account is able to actually deploy solutions from the marketplace into the tenant in which they are trying to subscribe to your product. We simply input those Azure account email addresses here and the people behind them will be able to purchase just as though they were a customer during preview stage. Add up to 10 like so, or if I wanna put them in a spreadsheet, I can up import as many as 20. So I'll just hit save draft here and we're successfully saved. Next, we're gonna look at the technical configuration, which is a very important part of the all up offer structure. So let's head into technical configuration and you'll find that there are four fields that need to be filled out on this page. And there are examples of each in the preview text for each one of these fields. Now, the technical configuration will be filled out in collaboration with the technical team implementing the SaaS integration. This page ensures the integration between Marketplace and its dependencies that publishers must provide, like a landing page and webhook URL, are active and functioning. Now, there are deeper explanations of these fields in the SaaS technical course on our website, so I won't delve into these values any further here, but just realize it's setting up the integration for your SaaS offer to the marketplace. But know that if you happen to be using the SaaS Accelerator, the installer provides these values for you. So you can simply cut and paste them into this form. This one's gonna be a bit longer of a section and plan overview is the section in which you create the plans that represent your different versions of your solution. Let's jump over to Partner Center and have a look at plan overview. Here, we would have a list of all of the plans associated with our offer should we have had one or more already. We don't. We're gonna start by creating a new plan. Now, what do I mean by plan? If you're not familiar with the term, consider a model where you have silver, gold, and platinum versions of your product, for example, and you want a plan for each version. Now, those plans will likely have different descriptions and price points. Let's jump in and create 
a new plan. When we create a new plan, we must give it an ID, just like we gave an ID to our offer. And we're going to give it a name, just like we gave a name to our offer. I'll hit create. And this will create, obviously, our first plan inside of our offer. Now, each offer must have at least one plan in order to be published. Great, so now that we've created our plan, we're taken to the plan listing page. You may remember from our offer listing page that this is where we describe our product to our customer. So I'm gonna put in a description for my plan. This is the silver plan description, and I'll just throw some text in there for demo purposes and hit save draft. Next, let's move on to pricing and availability. This is where we set up the meat and potatoes of our plan. The first thing we're gonna do is select which markets we want to sell our solution in. And in our case, we're simply going to select the United States. And I will hit save on that. And now you can see that I am using one of 141 markets that are available to me. Next, I get to choose my pricing model, and I'm gonna choose between flat rate and per user. Now, if I select per user, I'm asked to provide the minimum and maximum number of users for this particular plan. How many seats can be purchased and live within this plan? Most offers on the Azure Marketplace use flat rate billing. So let's take a look at flat rate billing. Now when I choose it, I'm able to add various billing terms and payment options for my plan. Let's have a look. I can add a one month, one time payment, and that let's just pretend is $100 a month. Now the subscription can be recurring and this means the customer would be charged every month for the solution as long as they stay subscribed to it. Next, I can add a one year, two or three year billing term. And the billing option can be I'm gonna pay it all up front in a one-time payment or I can pay it per month. Now let's say that we're gonna do a one-time payment for a one year contract and we'll charge $1,000, which is a $200 savings over the month to month pricing we've put in place. Again, we can add a two and a three year. If I add a two year, I get the additional option of being able to charge once per year. So if we charged every year, we might want to put in a $900 price for our two-year plan, which is a savings of $100 per year over our one-year pricing. So that's sort of how that lays out with regard to billing term, custom payment options, and prices. Next, let's jump down to metered billing. Now, if you're not familiar with metered billing, you might just want to take a pass on this section. But basically, if your solution is going to charge for transactions, something like let's pretend your solution sends SMS messages, text messages, and you want to charge a penny for each text message, you need to configure that in Partner Center so that your solution can call back to the marketplace via an API and charge for that usage. So let's check out what that would look like. So this might be the SMS ID and the display name might be SMS message. That's what's going to appear on the offer page. And the unit of measure in this case would be per message. And then our price per unit will set at one cent. All right. And then the question is here, how many do we want to include in the base for our monthly subscribers? So if we have a monthly subscriber, how many texts do they get to send for their $100 a month? Let's say that it's 5,000. And in the case of our one year subscriber, how many would we like to provide? Let's call it 50,000. 
That's the idea there. And we obviously can select unlimited too. We could say that for the one year plan, there's no limit to the number of SMS messages you might send. So let's go ahead and add that back. And you can put up to 30 dimensions inside this plan to charge against. Additionally, you can share these dimensions across multiple plans. So if you have silver, gold, platinum, each one uses SMS messaging, you can set different price points per plan and different number of included transactions per billing period in each plan. Next, we have a section that has its own video in the Partner Center course because it is a bit involved. And what it is here is the option for setting pricing in multiple markets. So let's say that we had chosen five different countries or markets that we would like to sell into at the top of the page. Had we done that, we could come down here, export a spreadsheet that would have the pricing in US dollars, and then the regions that we had selected or the markets. And we could then change the pricing should we want to do so in that spreadsheet and then import it back up to Partner Center where those prices now take effect in those different markets. For more information, see that dedicated video in the Partner Center course on our website. Next, let's take a look at the free trial. Now, free trial cannot be used in combination with custom meters. So we're actually prohibited from using that here, but we can at least describe it. And this is a period of time in which your customers can take your solution for a spin. And at the end of that period, let's say 30 days, the customer's subscription will actually transfer into a paid subscription. Let's actually take just a bit closer look. If I come up and disable my dimension that I've defined, notice that I can allow a one month free trial. And that 30 day or one month trial is exactly what we were talking about here. I'm gonna go back though and enable my dimension. I need to put my pricing back in apparently. There we go. And come down to plan visibility. Now in plan visibility, we can make the plan public so that everyone can see it on the marketplace or we might make this particular plan private to just one set of customers and those customers can be designated with their tenant ids if you have a set of terms and conditions or a custom price point that you would like to support for one or more of your customers you can put their tenant ids right here into Partner Center, and when they go browse the marketplace, they will find these offers with the custom plan that's just for them. With that, I'm going to make my plan public so that anyone in the marketplace can see it, and I'll save draft. That's the process of creating a plan in Partner Center. Now I can come back to my offer, plan overview section, and create another plan should I choose to do so. So you can build up that silver, gold, platinum set of plans here, as I described a bit earlier. Let's take a look at the final section that we fill out for SaaS offers in particular. Let's head over to the supplemental content screen. Supplemental content is sort of an attestation about the architecture of your SaaS solution. And we have a couple of options here. So we're going to select a scenario that matches how your SaaS solution is hosted and delivered. Now there are many ways to build and host a SaaS application, and this is where you choose the specific scenario that describes your setup. So the first option here is to say that our SaaS solution is fully hosted on Azure in the seller's tenant or ISV tenant. You would then agree to this and input your subscription ID that hosts your solution. So this can be checked to ensure that the subscription and its resources actually exist. Next, as an alternative, I can come back and say that my SaaS solution is partially hosted on Azure and partially hosted elsewhere. 
If I select that, you'll see that my SAS models section appeared down here. And there are several to choose from as you read through it. Let's say that Azure Platform SAS with external dependencies is the way I want to go. It's just going to pop up that I, I agree. Again, uh, in this case, you'll put in the customer's Azure tenant or whether or not this is an on-prem hybrid solution or other or none. It just depends on how your distributed solution is actually constructed and, and hosted. Now, finally, you can say that my SaaS solution is not hosted on Azure, in which case you can bring up your, in which case you can add your documents that detail this up to your offer. This needs to be a set of documents that explains why you're trying to sell your SaaS solution in the Azure marketplace when it's actually not hosted in Azure. For my solution, I'm going to say that I'm fully hosted on Azure. I agree. And I don't currently have the SaaS solutions subscription ID. So I'm just gonna say I need a little more time for that. They're asking me why I can't provide that subscription today. And I'll just say don't have it and hit save draft. Notice that I successfully saved, even though I did not provide the subscription and ID here. Let's take a quick look at what we talked through. Now we walked through all of these offer sections detailing the information to include in each. And this again was specific to SaaS offers and for other offer types, come back to the Partner Center course on the Mastering the Marketplace website. So I hope this video helps you when creating new offers for the Azure Marketplace. Thank you for joining us for another video from Mastering the Marketplace, the learning library where technologists go to get their offer on the Microsoft Marketplace. For more videos, hands-on labs, and sample code, find us at aka.ms slash mastering the marketplace.